Hi everyone. I'm coming in today um, making for you a vegan cheese sauce. I think I might have made it once before, but um, I, want, I didn't go back take a chat, take a look at my previous scopes to see if I'd done it before. But I thought since I have the new tripod and I watched how Alexis uses it, I thought I would come in here. You're not going to see the stove today because everything has already been done on the stove. But I do have my Vitamix sitting here. You'll be able to see me mixing things in my Vitamix. What you see here, what I've got on my calendar, are two cups of potatoes. Hi Cheryl, good to see you. Welcome. Two cups of potatoes that were diced, and I also have one cup of carrots. And I cook these together on the stove. You've got, you need to cook them together. So I'm going to throw this into the Vitamix. Then I took a half a cup of water from from the potatoes and, and carrots, and I set them aside. Hi, good to see you, and I'm going to throw that in here. Now I'm going to, I'm going to go follow this as I, as I go. Um, a third cup of olive oil. What I'm going to use is I'm going to use this measure here, but I wanted to make sure that I I got uh, all the all the wet stuff out because I don't want to. Third cup of olive. Oh, well, no, wait a minute. You don't have to do that. Third cup of olive oil. I always do that wrong. You don't have to do that for, for this. A third cup of olive oil. Well, actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the nutritional yeast in here first because the olive oil will make the nutritional yeast stick to my container. So I'm going to put the nutritional yeast in here first. Well, let me get a. Let me get a. Let me go get a spoon. <coughs> be a lot easier to get a spoon and put it in here because this is only supposed to be a third of a cup well that's that is the that is the wrong measure I got I I'm sorry that was for the liquid measure I gotta do this for this for the for the uh, solids I gotta use this end. I used the wrong end that's how that I to use for the oil so you have this third cup measure and I use this for the welcome to those coming in You'll be able to see everything I'm doing now that I've raised it up higher. And like I said, I don't know if I've ever done this one before, but I thought I would do this and, and let you see. And it's, I've already got my macaroni and cheese do, or macaroni done. I've got it in, um, cooked already, and I set it aside. I'm going to put this in here now. Now I need a third cup of olive oil. And this is the... This is the, sol the liquid side, and this down here would be the solid side. In case you're wondering now, these are the measure rolls from Pampered Chef. Now that says a third of a cup. I'll pour that in there. I believe that's all the the uh, cup measurements I need. I need teaspoons and tablespoons now. Now it calls for, um, I put the water in, olive oil. It calls for two teaspoons of salt. However, I made this before and put two teaspoons in it. It was way too salty. So I'm going to cut it back. I'm going to cut it back about a teaspoon because you can get things way too salty and then you can't hardly eat them. So I'm just going to put a teaspoon in, and I think that should be sufficient. And I'm not using regular salt. I'm using sea salt. I think I have it. Oh, yeah, here it is. I have it set out already. I'm using regular. I'm using sea salt. And welcome to those coming in. And don't be afraid to share this out. Oh, that'll be plenty. You don't want to put too much in there because that, that can overpower it. Because if you get things too salty, they taste awful. Believe me, <laughs> I've, I've been, been down that road. You can't hardly eat them. Um, one tablespoon of lemon juice. Okay, I'll get my tablespoon here. A little disorganized, but I can I can use this. Those are from Pampered Chef as well. That way I don't have to start looking for the other one. Welcome to those just coming in, and thank you for sharing this out, and thank you for being here. 
actually supposed to be fresh lemon juice, but since I don't have fresh lemons, I thought I'll just go ahead and use this. Now, half a quarter teaspoon of cook, uh, garlic powder and onion powder. So I'll set this for a half a half a tea, uh, quarter teaspoon. Clear up here. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. I like these spoons because they fit right into these jars. These, uh, and these all are organic. As you can see, the garlic salt and the onion salt that I'm putting in here is all organic. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. And this will be for my lunch because I'm putting it on my macaroni that I that I I'm letting it sit so it can uh, as it get cold sitting out here. Actually, what I did is I used the, pam the Pampered Chef pasta maker and I put it in there, the, the, uh, the macaroni, and it comes out real good. And uh, then, I'll, then I'll probably make a potato later too, but I wanted to show you this, this cheese sauce because um, Erlene has made this same cheese sauce, and it's a very good cheese sauce. I think I've got everything in here now. Yeah, because it calls for a dash of cayenne, which I do not use. It's optional anyway. And the case chicken seasoning, I don't use that either. That's that's even optional, but I don't use it anyway. I don't have any in the house, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use that. So I'm just gonna put these back. All right. Now I'm gonna have to run my Vitamix. It's going to be a little loud, so. I'm warning you now, it's going to be a little loud, but we'll see how it's going to come out. I don't think I have to use the tamper because it does have it does have liquid to it. If I have to use the tamper, it's right here. And I'm going to do this on the variable speed. I'm not going to use the, uh, um, the presets on this because I don't, I don't want to use the presets. I don't need to, but I'm going to, I have my tamper ready. And I'll take this off in case I need to use the tamper. You got to take this off to use the tamper. Whoops, screw it in, screw it. And you put the tamper down in there, and that, that gets it down. I may not have to use it. It's been a while since I've done this, so we'll find out. I'm going to start this on one, and then I'm going to raise it up. Because you don't have much liquid and stuff in there, it's almost like ice cream. But you don't want it. You don't want it. To, uh... I'm gonna, let me taste it off of here. Wow, that's good. And the nutritional yeast gives it that cheesy flavor, and it tastes very, very good. And I'm going to take this out. It's not the easiest thing to clean this up, can this pan up. But this is the container I'm going to put it in. It's a glass container. I think I'm going to find uh, a spoon in here that's clean. I'll just go ahead and. I'm going to take it out with this spoon. And you can see when I pour it into this container, how high it feels coming in. When I pour it in this container, how cheesy it really is. Doesn't that look good? As you can say, it, 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 you know, it, uh, I love using the Vitamix for things like this because it makes it nice and smooth. I didn't have to run for very long as you could tell. It, it, uh, made, it, it made fast work of it. Uh, and that's what's good about the Vitamix. I've got a spatula here somewhere. I'm a little disorganized today, but I've got a spatula in here I want to find. Oh, I can use this wooden one. This will work. To kind of get this out. Probably about the best I can do with it. I'll just sit it in the sink. But as you can see, I'll lift this up. There's my cheese sauce. I may have to lower it a little bit, but um, I'll hold it up. There's what my cheese sauce looks like. Um, it's very, very tasty. 
And actually, in essence, you could probably use it for uh, lasagna. You can use it for anything that you put cheese on. You know, um, you don't have to just stick with macaroni and cheese. Although I, I like to, I like to make my own because it's a lot better than buying cheese. I don't recommend anybody buy cheese and put regular cheese on it. You should not do that. Make your own cheese if at all possible. This has very good ingredients in it. I'll probably post this up on, on uh, YouTube and I'll post it back up on Facebook again. I don't remember posting it. If I posted it up before, I'll, uh, it's been a long time ago, so I'm just going to repost it. But as you can see, I'll have to hold it up since it's up high. Oh, I've inspired you. Well, good. I'm glad I have. It's simple to make. It's very simple to make. I'll tell you the ingredients that you use. Hi, River. Good to see you. Since my, I'm using the tripod and it's up high, I'll have to pick this up and show you because I don't have to stand right now. But this is my cheese sauce. And I put it in a glass dish. I've got some macaroni sitting in the microwave that I, I microwaved. And uh, I wanted to keep it, keep it hot. Here's what it has in it. First of all, you start with uh, two cups of potatoes. I peeled, I think, I think by the time I got done, it was two and a half, two and a half potatoes. But you have to judge for yourself. Now, they were not real big potatoes. So if you use a huge potato, it probably would only take maybe one. And one cup of carrots. Now, I peeled both the potatoes and carrots, of course. One cup of carrots. I think it took two small carrots. Because I only tell I have a small carrots. And then you cook those. And then after you cook it, then you put it in your Vitamix. Then you add uh, half a cup of water. You add the, a, third a third cup of olive oil. And like I said... The instructions call for two teaspoons of salt. That's a little bit too much salt. Um, oh, it needs it needs a cut, cutting right now. I'm probably gonna go, go get it cut tomorrow. I probably won't do a, peri <coughs> a periscope tomorrow because I got some ingredients. So I want to make a, a spinach pesto that Arlene had sent me in the mail, and I haven't uh, got the uh, ingredients for it yet. So I want to get that. But anyway, um, uh, <coughs> It called for two teaspoons of salt. However, I only put a teaspoon in it because two teaspoons of salt makes it way too salty. And I've tasted this before. And this is just, just fine now with only a teaspoon in it. And then a, <coughs> a tablespoon of lemon juice. They call for fresh, but I didn't have fresh, so I just used the bottle kind. You have to make you don't have to make do with what you have in your cupboard, you know. And it calls for a half a cup of nutritional yeast flakes. And a quarter teaspoon of onion powder, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, and it costs a dash of cayenne, but I didn't I didn't have cayenne. And a half a teaspoon of, of McKay's the chicken seasoning. Alright, now those are optional. But I'm gonna post it up on Facebook again to let you see it. I'm gonna take a picture of it and show you and <clears throat> let everybody on Facebook see what the what it looks like when it's done. You can see the yellow color, the nutritional yeast gives it that, that cheesy flavor because you want it to taste like cheese. This is healthy for you, but yet you don't have to worry about having real cheese because I've given up the real cheese, so I make my own. If you can find a good cheese recipe, go ahead and make it. This happens to be a real good cheese recipe. Now, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure where I got this. <coughs> you get it, yes. Cheese is no good for you. Let me get some water. It is absolutely no good for you. And I know people think it is, but uh, yeah, you're right. Dairy is the devil. It's not good for you at all. Yes, sugar is also bad. But at, uh, I still eat some things with sugar, but I try to eliminate that. But if I make anything with sugar, I'll use cane sugar or coconut sugar. I do not use the refined sugar, you know, the, the white refined sugar. That's no good. You don't want, don't want to use that at all. I suggest you not use that. But uh, that's what I have heard. But I, that's what people keep saying. But I still use it because I, that people, I hear that, but I have not found any, I have not found anything to the contrary. I've, I've researched it out and they have not said that agave is bad for you. In fact, they say agave is very good for you. Yeah, I've heard the same thing about agave, but these people say that it's no good for you. that has got high fructose in it. All agave has in it is agave, and that's it. It's agave syrup from the agave plant. It doesn't have any high fructose corn syrup in it, not whatsoever. Um, I do not use apple cider vinegar. If any recipe calls for apple cider vinegar, 
I will use lemon juice instead because apple cider vinegar is fermented. You should never put anything in your body that's fermented. Um, oh, was it? Good, good. I'm glad that you that you like that tofu burger. They're so easy to make, as you can see. And I know it's something that you'll probably want to make over and over again. You know, like I said, for that you can double the recipe. Now this is supposed to last about a week in the refrigerator. Look how much it made. If you have a family, this is probably quite a bit. Now this is quite a bit for me, so I'll put it in the refrigerator because it, uh, and then just heat it up each and every day. Um, I don't, we don't, we as Seventh-day Adventists, fermenting, anything that you put in your body that's fermented, it's not good for it. Um, oh, you sent me a pic um, in my messenger because uh, I haven't seen, I haven't been on my messenger yet. But anyway, ferment, fermentation is not good for your body. You don't want to eat anything that's fermented. It's best not to. So I suggest that um, apple cider vinegar, you, you, you completely do away with it. I don't need apple cider vinegar, like I said. Anything that calls for apple cider vinegar. Now, however, I find some recipes that call for both apple cider vinegar and lemon juice. Well, I just leave the apple cider vinegar out and put the lemon juice in. Because lemon juice, there isn't anything wrong with that. But apple cider vinegar is fermented. So you want to stay away from, away from that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't tell you that, that stuff. And you have to do and research it yourself and find out it's not good for you at all. It's like cheese isn't good for you. If you can give up cheese, give it up because it's not good for you whatsoever. You should not be eating you should not be eating cheese. If people knew what cheese had in it, they wouldn't want to touch it. Um, yeah, it's tr it is true. It's very very true. It's 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 very true. It's it's not good for you. But yes, some people swear by apple cider vinegar and they'll continue to use it even if it's organic. I don't even use it if it's organic. I I leave it completely out of my out of my recipes. Um, Oh, there are a lot of, well, there might be a lot of health benefits to it, but it's also a, it's also a, pro, uh, they've also, it's also gone for a process of fermentation. I just don't care for it. I don't care for vinegar anyway, but, uh, but uh, whether it's apple cider vinegar, white vinegar, uh, the, the dark vinegar, or whatever it is, I don't care for vinegar anyway, so I leave it completely out of my recipes. Now, I'm not telling you, but you can't put it in if you want to. I'm just telling you what the, what I have, I have read about it and what I've heard about it, but I myself won't use it. I'm not going to tell anybody else they can't use it. You know, you have to use your better judgment on that because, uh, oh, that probably would be the best way to do it. Use it for cleaning. Don't put it in your system. Don't. If you're going to buy apple cider vinegar, use it to clean your house. You don't use it to put it in your body. At least you're not going to affect your body that way by, by cleaning your house with it. But you got to be, you got to do your research and you got to be very diligent Hi, Earlene. You missed me making this. I made it in the Vitamix, but there, there it is. See, it looks real good, doesn't it? And I cut, and I cut back on the. It calls for two teaspoons of salt. Oh, that's okay, Earlene. You can go back and watch the replay. I didn't use the two teaspoons of salt it calls for. I only used one teaspoon because last time I made it, a long time ago, I put the two teaspoons. I made it just exactly the way it called for to the letter, and it just was so. Um, salty, I couldn't hardly eat it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I figured you were, but that's okay. You you got to do what you got to do early, and I understand. But at least you made it before I before I got off this periscope, and you can always watch the replay. I didn't um, I didn't show anything cooking on the stove today because I already had the, pota uh, the potatoes and the carrots done. Put them in my colander and throw them in the Vitamix. You just saw me. You won't go back and watch the replay and, and see how I mixed it in the Vitamix. You know, I have to clean the container out yet but it, it it's so good because I made some macaroni for lunch and I wanted to put this on it I'm getting tired of not having cheese sauce to put on it this is so simple to make and if you have potatoes and you have carrots in your house you know it doesn't take many of them I use the recipe now I don't feed the same recipe I have earlier where it calls for two cups of uh, potatoes and one cup of carrots that's the recipe I did I'm not sure where this one came from but it's this one here I don't know if this is the same one you have or not but I use this one and uh you put it in your broccoli soup. Oh, now there you go. That that would absolutely be. You know, I never I never thought about that. Um, yes, that would probably work to put that in in your broccoli soup. I never thought. I think the next time I make my broccoli soup, which I'm going to start making a lot more soups again because it's going to be getting colder. I'm going to I'm going to put that in my broccoli soup. You know, the broccoli and the broccoli and cheddar soup. That would be so good. 
you know, I never thought of that, but that would absolutely be good because this, you know, this with the nutritional yeast has a very good flavor. I bet it is because this, you know, this with the nutritional yeast in here. Now, a lot of people are against nutritional yeast. I myself have not found anything wrong with it. You're going to find some Adventists that swear against it. You cannot use it. You shouldn't be using it. That's them. If they don't want to use it, that's up to them. But I still, I still use it because I, it gives the, the cheese sauce a flavor. If I didn't use this nutritional yeast, it wouldn't have the flavor it has. It wouldn't taste as good. That gives it the cheesy flavor that you need. You, after all, if you're going to make cheese sauce, you want it to taste like cheese, but be more healthier for you and be vegan instead of being uh, what you buy in the store. I used to eat a lot of cheese. That was my downfall. I'd buy a lot of cheddar cheese and I'd eat that. I figured no more. I'm not buying cheddar cheese anymore and eating it because it's not good for you. I make my own. You, I make also. There's also a cheese uh, recipe I have that you that you can. The cheese is sliceable. I'll probably be making that again sometime. Um, I've also periscoped that while a long time while back, but it, it's sliceable. Yes, I know. My son is finding that out. He still loves his cheese. He told me, he says, Mom, I know I need to cut back on cheese, but, I, you know, he, he just, it's so hard for him. He's been eating cheese his whole life, and he just can't eat cheese. Now, they don't eat meat at all. Since she had her, her breast cancer, was diagnosed with breast cancer, they've cut completely back on, even the kids, they don't eat, they don't eat uh, any uh, meat at all. Thanksgiving time, she fixes a turkey. I don't eat the turkey, and they don't eat the turkey, and the kids don't eat the turkey. Everybody else does. My ex-husband eats it, and her family eats the turkey, but none of the rest of us eat the turkey. So, you know, it's up to everybody's discretion what you do, but I've chosen to go on this lifestyle because it's helped me to, to live a better life and be a, be a healthier person. Because, you know, when you think about it, this earth is so sin sick. It's so sick because of the things that people are putting in their bodies. If they only realized what they put in their body. They don't think before they put it in their mouth. They just go ahead and put it in their mouth and say, oh well, you know, I'm, if I get sick on it, I get sick on it. That's not the way they should feel. They should feel like, do I really need this? Should I be eating this? No, they shouldn't. But they, like I said, if they would think twice before they put the stuff in their mouth, they would, they would do it a lot better. And let me tell you, like Alexa said, making your own stuff, at least you know what's in it. Um, for meat substitutes, well, um, Christmas, I can't remember what they have at Christmas time. Um, she's been, she's been picking, pick, fixing vegetarian food at Christmas time. Um, you know, even, even she has a, a mock turkey loaf that she fixes for Thanksgiving. I have tried that and it's very, very good. But she fixed a lot of, a lot of veg. Now, they're not vegan. Um. Not completely vegan because they still eat cheese, they still drink milk and eggs and stuff like that. I'm hoping they will be someday, but at least they don't eat the meat. That's a good start. I'm trying to get them out of eating the cheese and drinking the milk, but you know how that is. You can't force people to do something they don't want to do. So I know what's good for me, and I know what I'm not going to have. So when, a, when cheese is passed around the table, I pass it by. It, I just let it go by because I am not going to eat it. I don't want to start that... Uh, tradition again you know once you get out of the habit of eating something that you used to eating years uh, for for years you start realizing that you didn't need it in the first place and you're willing to give it up and 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 not go back to it somebody asked me the other day if I would ever go back to eating meat again no I will not go back to eating meat again I know it, it uh, looks tempting but I refuse to go back to eating meat I'm gonna get make my own and it's like Alexa said, make your own food. You know, when you make your own food, you know exactly what is in it. This cheese sauce, I know exactly what's in it. I know how much of each thing I put in it. I know what, what, I, what is good for me and I know what's not good for me. When you buy the food in the store, a lot of your food in the store is highly processed. That's what makes it very bad. The processing that they go through is really bad. And it's got a lot of chemicals in it. And people don't realize that. Oh, <clears throat> uh, yeah. Well, he has to understand you're doing what you what was best for you. Maybe he'll give it up someday. But, you know, I it was hard for me at first, too, because I ate it for years. And then all of a sudden, I just gave it completely up. 
you know, and I thought, well, can I really do this? But I was able to do it, and it, I, and I'm still doing it to this day. I, I'm going to continue to do it because it's better for me. I feel better doing this, and and I know I look better. I've, I've lost a lot of weight, and I'm going to continue this process. It is a process. It's not something that can happen overnight. I put the weight on. Uh, and I didn't put it on overnight, and I'm certainly not going to take it off overnight. It is a long process. I've been at this over a year, and I'm down to about, I didn't weigh myself this morning. I weighed myself yesterday morning, about 193 from 250. So I've lost 58 pounds. That's a lot of weight. And I continue to lose more and more and more, 57, I think, something like that. And I, and I know there's going to be a stopping point where it's, where it's going to get to the point where I'm not going to lose much anymore. It's going to stay kind of stationary. I have to expect that. If, you know, if that happens, that's that's okay. At least I know I've accomplished something, losing the weight I've lost. Hi, good to see you, Rhonda. I've, I've hold up my cheese sauce since I got a bigger tripod. You can't. This is my cheese sauce I made, and I'm going to post it up on Facebook, and I will post it up on YouTube so people can see it. Let you know what, what I did put in it. Everything I put in it is healthy for you. Yeah, I know. It gets to a certain point that you're at a standstill. I know, and it's very, very frustrating. You keep wanting that scale to go down all the time, but it just sits there. Now, mine will fluctuate up and down. It'll go up maybe a pound or two, but it goes back down maybe three or four. So it fluctuates. But I think a lot of it is I'm, I'm still probably losing a lot of water, you know, because our bodies are made up of water. So got, some of it is water weight. So you have a tendency to do that where it's going to fluctuate because of the water weight. But I am happy with the progress I've made thus far because it's been a hard row to hoe. I have had a rough time of it. I didn't know was if I was going to be able to do this or not, but I kept at it and I was able to finally get myself down to a manageable size. My clothes fit a lot better. Um, I can wear smaller dresses and skirts to church now. I don't have to wear such huge clothes. And I'm glad for that. However, there are some clothes that are cut a little sh short, a little smaller, so I have to get a bigger size to make them fit. <clears throat> oh, well, um, all is well. Wonderful. All is well. And here's my, I'll hold this vegan cheese sauce up for those that can't see it. This is my cheese sauce. See that beautiful color? The nutritional yeast gives it that good color, and it also gives it the flavor that it needs. This has got <clears throat> onion powder in it. It's got garlic powder in it. It's got your nutritional yeast. It's got... Yes, it is. It's got potatoes in it. It's got carrots. And those are the main items, potatoes and carrots. When I first saw this recipe on the, online and I printed it out, I thought, wow, cheese sauce made with potatoes and carrots? Who would have thought it? But you know, it is very, very delicious. And <clears throat> like, like I said, I, put, I, I did everything it called for except the salt. It says two teaspoons of salt. That is way too much. So I cut it back to one teaspoon. That is plenty. Because if you put too much in it, it tastes too much salt, too salty. Because the last time I made it, I couldn't hardly get it down. And I didn't want to throw it away, but it was so salty, I couldn't hardly eat it. So I says, I'm not going to do that anymore. So, <clears throat> so I just have to remember to tell myself to, oh, thank you, thank you. It is a pretty color, isn't it? <clears throat> oh, you put, you put a, you put a one and a half teaspoons. Well, I, I tried it, Erlene, with just a teaspoon in it, and it tastes just right. For me, it tastes just right. I don't like a lot of salt in my food, uh, for, so cutting it back to one teaspoon like I did, just it's just just right. <clears throat> yeah, because I think everybody's tastes are a little bit different. So, hi, good to see you. Welcome. No, not any nuts in this one. No, I use potatoes and carrots, um, nutritional yeast. I use olive oil, garlic powder, onion powder. Um, I have to remember everything I used in it. Okay, um, two cups of potato, uh, two cups of potatoes, one cup of carrots. Of course, you cook them on the stove first. A half a cup of water, which I took, I took a half a cup of water from the potatoes and carrots that I cooked, and I, I put that in my body mix. I drained the rest off because you don't need the rest. And then um, a third cup of olive oil, and it's like I said, it's calls for two teaspoons of salt. I used only one teaspoon. One tablespoon of lemon juice. I didn't have the fresh lemon, which they recommend the fresh lemon. I don't have that. I don't. 
I don't care for lemons all that much, so I just buy the bottled um, lemon juice and use that. I find it a lot easier anyway, because you still have to measure it out. So I want uh, half, uh, one tablespoon of that, a half a cup of nutritional yeast, which isn't very much. Um, and let's see, and one quarter teaspoon of onion powder and one quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. Oh, that, oh, that's what I figured, Erlene. And, of course, it calls for a dash of cayenne, which is optional in McKay seasoning. I didn't put those in there because I don't care for cayenne. But that this recipe is a simple recipe. And like I said, potatoes and carrots in a cheese sauce, who have ever thought it? But, you know, it's delicious. It is very, very good. And once I pour this over my macaroni, it's going to taste just like cheese. Just like cheese without the cheese, without the cheese processed cheese that you get in the store because this isn't processed. That's why I highly recommend if you can make your own foods to go ahead and make your own. You're going to be a lot better off because you won't have the any processing to it. You know what you put in it. You've got the recipe in front of you because you look at the at the ingredients and things in the store and, and this is the sad thing of it is people buy the stuff in the store and they don't even look at the ingredients. Their processed foods have a lot of chemicals. Do we know where those chemicals come from or what they even are? No, we don't. And they're su such big words that I can't pronounce most of them. And I always say this, if you can't pronounce, the, pro pronounce them, don't put them in your body. Oh, you know, I've never been, I don't think I have a recipe like that, but that does sound good. Um, well, you made grilled cheese with it. Oh, yes, that would, that would work too, Erlene. Yes, it would. I haven't made my grilled cheese in a long time, but yes, that would work with it too. But... Like I said, I also make a cheese that's sliceable, which is also very good cheese. I made that a while back, too, in Periscope, that you can slice it, and I've used that. And it's good for grilled cheese or whatever. I'll probably go back to making that again. But I, I was so hungry for my cheese sauce, my macaroni and cheese, that I thought, I'm going to make this cheese sauce. It doesn't take that long to make it. You only have to cook the, the potatoes and carrots, put everything in the Vitamix, mix it up together, and you got it. And I'll show this one more time before I get off of here. This is a very good... If you want to take a screenshot of it, go ahead and take a screenshot of it. It's a very colorful uh, dish. I'm going to post this up on Facebook again so people can see it in case they don't they don't have it and they want it. I'm going to post the recipe up there too. In the meantime, I think I'm going to go now because I I want to get ready to eat this because it's going on 3 o'clock here. But, so, and until we meet again, which will probably be Sabbath at church. If I, don't, if I don't come on tomorrow, don't worry about it. I may come on Friday, but I, I think I've got things to do tomorrow, so I won't be in tomorrow. But I'll try to come on Friday if at all possible. So I do want to make that spinach pesto recipe that you sent me on in the mail early, and I haven't tried that yet. I need to get the stuff for it. So in the meantime, you take care and God bless, and have a great day. And until we meet again, bye-bye.